Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, um, the law actually allows for the exemption firstly to take place. And it does, does say quite specifically that the exemption should be what we call off-budget state entities. In other words, government does not give these state entities any money. EFL, of course, being one of them, including, for example, Fiji Ports Corporation Limited. Mr. Speaker, sir, by way of background, uh, EFL now is owned 51% by the Fijian government, 44% by a company called Seven Specific PT Limited, and Sevens, Mr. Speaker, sir, is owned by Chugoko, which is a private Japanese company. And the other shareholder is Jibik, the Japanese Investment Corporation, which is in fact owned by the Japanese government. And the balance of the 5% is owned by ordinary Fijians. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, I, I could go into a lot of details, but essentially what has been happening, Mr. Speaker, sir, the Audit Office of the Auditor General has been outsourcing a lot of its own functions. I've got a list of companies here that the Office of the Auditor General actually outsources the auditing work to. So en Energy Fiji Limited, since 2006, they've been outsourcing it. The last audit was done by Ernst & Young. The uh, Fiji Hardware Corporation has been outsourced to KPMG. This is all by the Office of the Auditor General. Food Processes Limited, uh, 2009 will be audited by Office of the Auditor General. Moving forward, the backlog will be outsourced. Biosecurity Authority Fiji, 2014-2016, has been outsourced to HLB um, uh, accounting firm. Mr. Speaker, sir, what we have seen also is that the Office of the Auditor General takes at least four months. Even though it's outsourced, then they carry out their own, what we call the operational audit. Now, they won't release any of these, uh, even though it's outsourced, until after four months. There's a requirement under the Companies Act, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the company to actually lodge their accounts within three months into the company's office. And Mr. Speaker, sir, the uh, EFL will soon be listed on the South Pacific Stock Exchange. And Mr. Speaker, sir, again, the SPX uh, requires the submission of its annual financial statements to the SPX no later than three months after the end of its financial period. So Mr. Speaker, sir, there's absolutely no truth, and I've, I've got a whole list of uh, very you know, dramatic um, headlines by, of course, uh, Fiji Village and Fiji Times and all of them, uh, where Honorable Prasad talks about uh, um, no more accountability and transparency. Uh, Honorable, uh, not Honorable, uh, the Pied, your Pied Piper uh, talks about why there has been an exemption. And then, of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, Narumbe says this is protecting, protecting corruption, and some other people you know, give, make all sorts of comments. In fact, what is really interesting, the honorable members from the other side to date has never raised an issue about Fiji Ports Corporation Limited. Fiji Ports Corporation Limited is not actually audited by the Office of the Auditor General. The annual report is done by external sources and comes directly into parliament. They missed that point. So what is the difference between that? Nobody's saying that the accounts won't be tabled in Parliament. The accounts will be tabled in Parliament, as have they been doing with FPCL, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, sir. So there's nothing untoward about it. It also, Mr. Speaker, sir, as allowed under the law, it must be carried out, the audit must be carried out by a organization that is certified to do so. And as we have seen, PwC, Ernst & Young, KPMG, HLB are all certified accounting firms that can carry out the work, uh, audit work. And Mr. Speaker, sir, if they are saying that the Office of the Auditor General, because it has not audited it, and therefore some, somehow or the other, this untoward behavior, nobody audits the Office of the Auditor General does not audit the Red Cross. Friends is not audited by the Office of the Auditor General. Fiji Public Service Association is not done by the Office of the Auditor General. The Fiji Teachers Union Women's Crisis Center, they're not audited by the Office of Auditor General, but nobody says, therefore, that there's no transparency. They all claim to be transparent. Mr. Speaker, sir, so it's illogical. It is illogical, Mr. Speaker, sir. You see, they've been caught out. They've been caught out. And, Mr. Speaker, sir, you see, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the unfortunate thing about this opposition. They look for some scam, some kind of you know, untoward behavior to score political points and get to the front page of Fiji Village or Fiji Times. That's what they're doing. 
They forget the fact that if they forget the fact that if they forget the fact that FPCL all these years has not been using the office of the Auditor General, yet they don't have a problem with that. It's stable in Parliament, and you call them in and they come and answer to you. Same thing, Mr. Speaker, so is done by EFL. Similarly, other organizations are also done by outsourced companies. There's nothing fishy about it. It's about efficiency. It's about efficiency. Mr. Speaker, sir, in fact, one of the financiers a few years back did not want to rely on the Office of the Auditor General's assessment. They said we want to go back to the private company that did the audit because they thought the Office of the Auditor General was somehow the other compromised. One of the finances that was actually lending money to EFL. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, the fact of the matter is the law allows for it. The reasons have been given as to why it's being done. The annual report will be tabled in Parliament, and the honourable members are quite happy. They can quite actually, you know, happily uh, question EFL on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you.